Hey guys, it's Matt with Me Church, and welcome back to my outdoor kitchen. Today, we're gonna smoke a brisket with what I would consider a non-traditional brisket rub. Let's test a voodoo brisket. So we've got Labor Day coming up. I know a lot of you are gonna be smoking outside. Brisket's gonna be on the menu for a lot of you. So this is very timely. But more importantly than that, I was at a trade show last week. I was at the Ace Fall Convention in Chicago and a guy walked up to our booth and he said, man, I followed uh, your brisket recipe, made my first brisket and I honestly think it was the best brisket I've ever made in my life. And I'm like, dude, that's awesome. That's why we do what we do. And I said, you put holy cow on it which is our beef rub. And he said, no, I put voodoo on it. And I went, <laughs> voodoo isn't supposed to go on brisket. Uh, I had a similar reaction years ago when people were telling me they were putting holy cow on chicken. And I think, man, that thing's pepper forward. That's not a poultry rub. And then I tried it and I love it. Well, we've actually had quite a few stories lately of people saying they put voodoo on a brisket and it's been good. Well, here's the deal. Voodoo is our number one seasoning, but I call this the most epic wing rub of all time. It's a savory rub, it's more salt forward, it only has a little pepper in it, it's got a little kick. It's not designed to go on beef. Um, but having heard it more and more, I'm like, we should try this. So full disclosure, I've never done this. So we've cooked one overnight, uh, I'll get to that, but we're gonna make one here today and the taste test in the end is gonna be real. And I'm gonna be honest with you because, you know, make a trail and do what you want. But let's jump in and, uh, and see how this turns out. So let's get started here with, I've got a full packer brisket. So I'm not gonna trim this for you today. I've already trimmed it. This was a 14 pound prime brisket I bought at my local HEB and I trimmed probably three pounds out of it Watch this video here. I have a uh, brisket trim video that shows you how to do what I consider a Texas style trim. Um, and it'll get you to this point. So I've already trimmed it. We're gonna jump right into seasoning it and I'm gonna tell you all the details on how I cook a brisket. And then most importantly, we're gonna taste it. So let's get going here. Uh, first things first, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little pepper on. So look, pepper catches smoke. I think this needs a little pepper. So I'm opting to put a little coarse pepper on this in the beginning. This is 16 mesh pepper, very common in Texas barbecue. There's a myth that Texas barbecue is just salt and pepper. That's not true. Um, it's predominantly salt and pepper, but we need a little bit. So I'm not going too heavy. I'm gonna season both sides. Flip it over. Just a little bit. So there's a ton of pepper in our holy cow rub. You guys know that, it's pepper forward. But let's go the main thing, voodoo. This is where we're going heavy. This is a fine rub. You guys know I cook fat side up, so we're gonna season this meat side first. So I want it liberal, or at least, at least moderate. I want total coverage. Make sure you get the sides. And while I'm doing this, I can talk about the trim a little bit. You guys know I trim fairly aggressively. Uh, and that's because when you trim a brisket to this degree, every slice is gonna be great. See, I trimmed off the thin part of the flat here. You'll see that in the brisket trim video. That way, every slice here is awesome. Don't ever discard anything uh, that you trim off. You know, use those trimmings for burgers, chili, whatever, uh, and use, you know, render the fat down into tallow. So you can see, it was a little bit of pepper, it's a lot of voodoo. The makeup of this is, like I said, it's salt forward. It has only a touch of sweet in it. I consider it a savory, it is definitely a savory rub with just a hint of sweet. All right, that's pretty good. I'm gonna pat it in. Now, I like to let my seasoning adhere for a couple hours on a brisket if I have the time, but in any case, we're gonna let this one sweat out. I'm gonna take this one out of here and then we're gonna jump into the cook. So 
So we actually prepared another brisket the exact same way and put it on at like midnight last night. It's been cooking for nine hours and it's at the wrap stage. I'm gonna show you that, but let me get my butcher paper out so I can show you how I wrap. We're gonna see how it looks. You know, is it gonna look any different from a holy cow brisket or salt and pepper brisket? So this is our 18 inch unwaxed butcher paper. This is cider vinegar. Um, I spray all over the paper. You've seen this before uh, to make it more pliable. I go heavy where the brisket's gonna lay. So let's get her out. So this is smoking on a Traeger Timberline XL with meat church pellets. You can smoke this on anything you want, but when we're test cooking, I'll often use a pellet grill because I can just lock it on a specific temperature and not have to worry about any other variables. Okay, well that's my first look at it uh, in a couple hours and it actually looks very similar. I mean, I don't know if it looks much different to be honest with you. Um, you know, maybe a little hard for y'all to see. It has a hint of mahogany. It's not turned completely black. So how did we get to this point? We have been smoking this for nine hours, uh, seven hours at 225 degrees with super smoke enabled. And then this morning I increased the temperature to 250 degrees and ran another two hours. So nine hours total. So when I go to wrap, first and foremost, I'm looking at the bark development um, you're looking for a visual cue first, but then I usually wrap in the 170s, like kind of here in the flat, and, and you can see you know, 177, that's just my sanity check to know, okay, where, where I want to be. Um, I'll put a little more cider vinegar across the top. You guys had to have watched our brisket video with our man Leonard at Truth Barbecue, and I picked that up from him. So here's what I do. I go right over the top, I tuck underneath, just want to do this very tightly. So what Leonard does, he actually came in here like a paper football, so I kind of started adding that little step to mine. Then what I do is I fold my paper over very tight. It's like swaddling a brisket baby. Keep it really tight, pull it back. Nice and tight. All right, what do we do from here? I like to increase my temperature on a pellet grill to 275 to help render out those last fats. Um, it's gonna take, depending on the size of your brisket, um, this is probably gonna take a little over three hours. So we're gonna put it back in. We'll see you guys at the next step. Spoiler alert, it's gonna take three and a half hours for that brisket to finish. How do I know? We actually are cooking two in advance so that my team doesn't have to wait. Um, I cooked this one yesterday, exact same method, same size. It was identical to the one that I've showed you. So uh, nine hours until we wrap, three and a half hours to finish. But here's the one thing I wanted to be able to do for you guys. Most people only rest their briskets one or two or three hours. The best barbecue joints in the world in Texas rest their briskets all night. That's what I did here. This finished after midnight last night. Um, I actually took the brisket in the butcher paper and just set it on my counter in my outdoor kitchen for a couple hours, a little more than two hours. Uh, I allowed it to rest down to an internal of 140 in the flat. And then I used a little trick I learned from Wayne Miller, my buddy Leonard at Truth does this as well, wrapped it in food service film. Here in Texas, restaurants put in a warmer at 140 all night. None of you probably have a warmer at home that can do that, which is why I've always struggled to teach it. So I did the next best thing. I put mine in a Traeger on Keep Warm, which is 165. A uh, little hotter than you really want it to be, but it's better than just resting it an hour. The decline of internal temperature and the rest is equally as important as the cook. My buddy Leonard recently told me, you can take a perfectly cooked brisket and you can ruin it by not resting it the right way. So that's why I wanted to do it. Other options you have at home, you could use your oven. Um, you know, I don't like to use the indoors. It, they're normally 170, 175. Um, if you use a cooler, you can't hold it for eight or nine hours. So you got to condition it with like hot water and you're going to have to do some tricks because you're, you're not going to be able to hold it safely for eight hours. So keep warm 165 on a Traeger. That's how we got here. And this literally just came right out. So I'm going to cut off the food service film here. And we're gonna see, let's see how this thing looks. And then obviously we're gonna get in and taste it and 
I'm gonna see what all the clamoring is about on a on a voodoo brisket. Is it is it something that scares me or is it something y'all should go try? All right, I feel like that's uh, upside down, but here we go. Here we are. I mean, you can see, like, feel the fats here. Like, it's uh, it's nice and soft. I mean, it's got great bark. Had a little bit of a pooling here, so that's why it's a little lighter here. But honestly, visually, I'm a little surprised, uh, you know, not being just a salt and pepper brisket. I thought with the color of the voodoo, it might actually end up being a little bit on the mahogany side. Uh, but it, it looks great, to be honest with you. So, man. You can look right here like I said that you know seems like everything's rendered really well and I'm ready to I'm ready to dig in and see how we did let's slice into this uh, into this beauty okay brisket slicer well she's nice and juicy that's for sure I'm just gonna take, uh, I'm gonna cut a little bit of both. We'll get a little lean, a little fatty. Let's see here. So we can taste test both. I'm a, I'm a fatty guy, but we gotta, we gotta try it all. Man, that's like a river of moisture right there. Oh yeah. Whoop, that's my piece. I don't know what y'all are gonna eat. Okay. A little fatty, a little lean, cooked good, pulls right apart. I slice that a little bit thick. Voodoo brisket. Here we go. I ain't mad at it. Dude in Chicago that told me that, that's good. I actually think I should have put a little more pepper on it, but that's just my personal preference of like, you know, loving, loving pepper. Um, but man, that's good. Let me try the fatty. Oh, that's damn good. I'm going in for a second bite. Man, I'm surprised. I'm admitting this, I've never done it before. Um, I'd love to hear in the comments other combinations where y'all use rubs that aren't what we intended them to go on. Um, you know, Voodoo has a little kick, and after this is all cooked, there's no kick to it whatsoever. It's, uh, I told you in the beginning, it's a, you know, it's a little more salt forward, so that's why I think you should put some pepper, and, and you know, now that I've tried it, I wish I kind of went heavy on the pepper, but again, my personal preference of just kind of how we do things in Texas with a lot of coarse cracked black pepper, especially if your name is Joe Zavala. Um, but that's really good. I mean, the bark, um, the bark is there. Um, the flavor is there. It's obviously, we started with a great brisket. Uh, the timberline, you know, did great. Told y'all when we test cook, we like to use those because the temperature is just dead on. So that was, uh, that was super good. So I'm excited for y'all to try this for Labor Day. Give it a shot. Let me know what you think. Um, and please like and subscribe. We're dropping weekly how-to, straightforward, no-stick, outdoor cooking videos every week. See y'all next time.